This is Jeff Walker, a 25-year-old from Sylvania, Ohio, or Ottawa Lake, Michigan, depending on who he's talking to. To some, he may appear like a typical privateer with a career best finish of 16th overall at the 2018 Ironman National. But if you happen to frequent YouTube, he's actually making big waves in a different way. In this new age where riders like Dean Wilson, Adam Cianciarillo, Alex Martin, and many others are using vlogs to connect to fans, Jeff Walker lands right near the top in terms of viewership. You may not hear much about him on TV, but he certainly garnered a lot of attention with his YouTube channel. So at Millville, we follow Jeff around to see behind the scenes of his vlog, his setup at the races, and what a day in the life of Jeff Walker is all about. Yo, what's up Racer X? My name is Jeff Walker. You guys are going to be spending the day with me here at the Millville Pro National 2021, baby. Uh, this is a sick track. It's definitely one of the favorites amongst the fans and the riders. Um, I think it's definitely my favorite track. So definitely stoked to be given the opportunity to take you guys along uh, on my day. Kind of show you guys my glorious privateer setup here. Um, show you show off my bike and all my great sponsors and uh, kind of show you guys the tight little crew that we're working with here. So here it is, the glorious privateer setup. Um, in years past, I normally just show up in a moto van and stay in a hotel, but uh, after a couple years of doing this thing, we kind of decided to go a little bit bougie this year. So we got the little mini motor home here. Um, nothing too spectacular, just the little 25 foot conquest. Uh, she gets the job done. You can see there's my good high school buddy Nick Zam back here. Hey. He's in charge of all the vlogging this year, which is great. <laughs> I don't have to worry about filming all that stuff. So hopefully that gives you guys a great look into my day. So thank you, Nikki. Um, but yeah, the little conquest, we followed up with our little 16 foot trailer that I've had ever since I first started racing. <laughs> it gets the job done. It's perfect for just one guy. As you can see, my, my local buddy from Minnesota, Connor Ehlers, is helping me out, turning wrenches and stuff. Looks like he's already stealing parts off the practice bike, so that's always a good sign first thing in the morning. Thank you, Connor. <laughs> Just make, making sure they're ready for later. Perfect. We love it. <laughs> but yeah, it's a kind of modest setup in here. Um, basically just laid down some epoxy floor, bring the necessities, the tools, the gear, everything like that. You know, everything we need to go racing. And then the beautiful race bike, race tech built this thing up suspension and engine it absolutely barks um, it's a pretty competitive bike even in the 250 class and me being six foot two you got to make sure you have a good bike so they definitely built a, a nice race steed here and then we keep things small pretty much the only other person that comes with me on the weekends is my dad over there looks like he's busy in old-time conversation with some of his old friends so we'll let him be I think he's a little camera shy as it is so maybe you guys will get to meet him later we might have to sneak up on him with a camera but yeah Connor's got things dialed in here. It's great not having to worry about the bike because uh, I'm not a huge fan of doing bike work anyway. So yeah, we keep a tight crew here, but a bunch of people that I trust and we're keeping the vibes high. We're gonna head up for qualifying practice in about an hour and a half here. So we're just chilling, loosening up the body and then head out there and shred it. qualifying it would make my life so much easier we did it all for the vlog racer x you're welcome we brought all the drama that you could ever want all right obviously you guys already saw practice was good we're in by the skin or the hair on our chin which we don't have much hair on our chin so <laughs> we're in though 
Um, so that's always good. Normally, if I get straight in through practice, that's a good sign that the motos are gonna go well because I'm a way better racer than I am a practicer. So normally I waste like 10 more minutes of sprinting in the LCQ and then get like 26th. So yeah, no reason to go to the LCQ when, we're due, when we do that well in the motos. So to go straight in is great. We don't have to waste all that energy in the LCQ. Um, plus you just never know what's gonna happen in the LCQ. It is absolute chaos. So straight to the motos is great. Um, always love Millville. It's a great track. I do well here. Um, these long legs get through those sand whoops pretty good. So we're looking to we're looking to have a good day. Um, my best this year was 26-26 at Redbud. Um, my goal pretty much is to go under 25 in the motos and uh, work our way towards points slowly this season. So if we can get around the 25th spot, I'll be happy. Um, but yeah, this is the fun part of the day. No stress. We get to go out there, just battle it out with the boys, and. Uh, make Connor proud over there. So <laughs> should be good. We'll go out there and uh, we'll have ourselves a good race. and everything motocross was like strictly for fun that was like one thing that my family was really like you know um and and me too it wasn't just my parents like telling me just to do it for fun like i just did it for fun we they never pushed me to do anything i didn't want to like um you know if i wanted to do loretta's cool if not i wasn't really fast enough anyway so it didn't matter um so it was always a fun thing um the plan was always to go to college which i did i kind of actually quit racing pro um in like 2016 and went to college, did a five year pre-med degree. And the plan was always to go to med school after that. So I was like all set to take the MCAT, but uh, it's kind of funny the whole YouTube thing came around because my dad has always been like a huge, huge part of my program. He's just, you know, there the first time I rode, my first race, my first time at Loretta's, my first pro national. He just loves it. He comes to the practice track with me every single time I'm there. And I feel like that's pretty unique. Um, so when I moved away to college and I finally brought a bike down there, he would text me every single time I went riding. He was like, dude, how is it? Like, is there anyone fast there? How's the bike? How are you riding? And I was like, you know what? For my birthday, I'll just get a GoPro and I'll start uploading a couple videos. And uh, that was back in 2018. So it was really just a way for me to like keep in contact with my dad, um, give him a little bit of a satisfaction while I was gone, just to keep him held over. And uh, Somehow, some way, I don't know if it was the cool tracks that I was riding in Florida, um, whether it was just like luck. I feel like luck played into it a lot, um, but I got super lucky and people started to tune in and watch them more and more and they were like demanding it almost, like they couldn't get enough. So it was really cool and uh, really fortunate. And the time that it really hit me that this was like something that I could continue to do was uh, my first pro national after I started doing the vlogs, they were like, a hundred people at least came up to me in the pits and they were like dude like this is sick like meeting you and i'm like what do you mean it's sick meeting me i'm just a goofy like college kid so uh that's super rad like getting the fans and everything involved like i'm not gonna lie i was kind of burnt out on it um until that happened but now it gives me a whole new purpose to go to the practice track like all the kids come up and they want autographs and stuff and i'm like dude this is like so sick so yeah uh it's awesome man like it's definitely a dream not taking it for granted, trying to uh, do this thing as long as I can. And yeah, I just really appreciate everyone, especially you guys for like helping shed some light on it and uh, all the fans for watching and everything. It's sick. So yeah, kids out there, if you guys want to race pro, but maybe you're not a factory guy, pick up a GoPro, start doing some vlogs. You never know where it could take you. So uh, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs>
All right, guys, well, that was a grueling day. Got a lot hotter than I was thinking, and uh, I think last night I, I started to feel myself getting like a little bit of a cold or something. Um, I was like shivering when I was going to bed, and that's definitely not normal. So I was kind of worried about it, but I, I didn't want to have that in the back of my head, so I just kind of ignored it and tried to get through the day. But uh, all day I could just kind of feel like my physical health just declining. So that first moto was rough. Halfway through it, it was feeling like I had to go to the bathroom real bad for uh, lack of a better way to put it. And uh, that's exactly what I did when I got off the track. So yeah, that yeah, was a rough one. Um, I think we were around like 32nd. And the boys told me, they were like, look, this next one, we don't care how you finish. Just go out there, do like three or four laps as hard as you absolutely can. Um, just prove to yourself that like you can do the lap times and run up there. Um, it'd be way better to do four laps in 20th and pull off than to just ride around in 35th the whole time. So um, it was more so just a confidence building thing and that's actually like exactly what we did. I got a horrible start, 38th. Um, and then by the second lap, I was in 22nd. So I think we held that for maybe 10 minutes, maybe the halfway mark. And that's when I felt things were starting to shut down. And uh, we made an emergency exit to the nearest porta potty. <laughs> thoroughly destroyed that thing and uh yeah that was all she wrote but we uh mission accomplished for sure definitely did what the boys said and um they're right i'm definitely happier with the day like kind of proving that i could run up there towards the points and uh it's a bummer of course obviously it's it's more fun to have a perfect weekend but the reality is, is that is super rare and hard to happen and uh more times than not this is the reality of it. So you guys definitely got a good look at what a typical privateer weekend is like out here. It's not always glamorous and perfect, but we love it. So we'll be back next weekend, or actually for Unadilla will be our next one. So hopefully that one goes a little bit better, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed um, taking a behind the scenes look. Hopefully you guys uh, kind of got a little insight into what it's like being a pro out here and things don't always go perfect. But huge thank you to Racer X. Kellen, you're the man. Thank you for uh, following us around all day, putting up with all of our shenanigans. And uh, on to the next one. We'll be back better and, uh, and stronger and hopefully by the end of the season we'll get some points. But yeah, thank you guys. Thank you Racer X. We'll see you guys sometime soon.